الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيد الأنبياء والمرسلين وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد وعلى آل سيدنا محمد كما صليت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم إنك حميد مجيد اللهم ألهمنا مراشد أمورنا وأعذنا من شرور أنفسنا Continuing with the seerah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and message lessons that we derive from it. When Allah's Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam reached Medina Munawwara, the first thing that he began doing even before building his own house was to establish a place where the people could get together. Ulama write that the main purpose of Masjid al-Nabawi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was Masjid. Masjid means a place of making sajda. It is a unique aspect in Islam that in sajda man is alone with this Allah. So you say Allahu Akbar. In Allahu Akbar you have pushed the whole world away from you. The mind would have thought that the best place for the salah then would have been in prophecy. Because you want everyone away from you. You're saying Allahu Akbar. There's no world in front of me. There's no people in front of me. There's no noise in front of me. But the law of the Shariat was the opposite. It wanted you to find Allah in a place where you're surrounded by all. So it was not that now the time of Salah comes, you go in your cave. Now there's no noise. Now there's no child at the back screaming. Now there's no one touching you on the side. But Allah Taala wanted that the people of Iman, because this was going to be a nation who had to love with the people, and while being with the people, they had to be with Allah. They had to be in the market. This was completely different from previous times where piety meant not to be a businessman. Here it meant to be a pious businessman. In previous time, piety meant not to get married. There was a time when the Christians adopted this method. The man who doesn't get married, he is the pious. Nabi Wasallam cancelled this entire thing. He said, La rahbani fil Islam. In Islam, you will get married, but you have to learn how to be a pious husband, how to be a pious wife, how to be a pious father, how to be a pious son. The worker was told, you'll have to find your piety as a worker. Nabi Wasallam said, Allah has given double reward for that slave who is able to fulfill the rights of Allah and able to fulfill the rights of the master. Why a double reward is because when work is around you, it now becomes much harder to concentrate on what your purpose in life is. Had in this world Almighty Allah created a system that the fire does not burn, then it would have been no kamal of Ibrahim alayhi salam that when he fell towards the fire, he went. Then it never burnt him. He said, Marikan, if the fire burns sometimes and doesn't burn sometimes, there would have been no exam. Allah created a system in this world what is called cause and effect. It was created that the cause results in the effect so many times that the people on the earth must start being believing that the cause causes the effect. And at that moment the person of Iman will say no, Allah causes the effect. This was Iman. That Masjid's purpose was surrounded by people you will have to learn how to find your Allah. When that Allahu Akbar will now be said, now you'll have to understand the man on my right is always going to be there. The one on my left is always going to be there. Surrounded by people, I have to find my purpose in life. The masjid was going to teach man outside the masjid. Many of us want a life with no problems. When we get no problems, I'll sort out the problem on the right, sort out the problem on the left, then I will devote myself for Allah. The answer is that problem on the right and the left is never going to leave. You will have to learn to find Allah with problem on the right, left, behind and in front also. Surrounded by problems, the masjid was going to teach man, this is where you will find your Allah. In this world, me and you will find our creator surrounded by problems. What people say, I just will sort out one more thing, then I'll come straight. That straight will never come. Masjid. First thing that was put up, come to the masjid for salah. The second is, whenever a person will start worshipping Almighty Allah alone, 
in a very short space of time, laziness will settle in. It will start off with a huge fervor. You will be fully devoted. Like when we went through this virus, in how many houses there was that? We got our musalla. But as the days would go, then the people in that musalla would get smaller. The one group will say, you read your namaz now, I'll read just now, because it's a musalla. Then there was one person reading namaz, then the sunnats fell away, the nafils fell away. A masjid is a place where as soon as a person enters it, he understands, I'm here now. If there's few minutes left, he's going to read four rakats. He's going to read two rakats. The masjid was that place that even if he doesn't read anything, as soon as he sits there waiting for the salah, Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam mentioned that the angels start making dua for him. After the salah is finished, he's supposed to now engage in sunan. But he's lazy, he's tired. So he just sits in the masjid. He just sits. Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, as long as his wuzu does not break, the angels continue making dua for him. This is the masjid. First thing that was built was the masjid. It taught man that the fault of the believer is this is the place. Nabi Sallallahu devotion and love for the masjid then became such. And he taught the world that everyone must have one masjid which is his. This is my house before my house. This is my life before my life. Allah's Nabi Sallallahu when he would return from a journey, his most beloved was Hazrat Fatima radiallahu anha, his daughter. But before going to her house, he would first go to the masjid. As though to say, you are first. And then comes my family. In the masjid, he would perform two rakat salah. People would meet him in the masjid. He would sit for a while. This is my house I came back to. A house before our house is a masjid. Everyone must have one masjid, which must be my masjid. And as a person gets older, he must become more devoted to that masjid. To that spot in that masjid. That masjid must regard him as mine. He must say, the, this spot in the masjid is mine. That relationship, like a man says, this is my house. This is my spot for that masjid. Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi said, for the masjid, there are certain pegs. For the masjid, there are certain pegs. Sahaba radiallahu anh asked, what are the pegs of the masjid? He spoke about this. That that one person who's there, when you enter, you know that's his spot. You're not going to miss him. May Allah tabarakallah make us, we become a peg in some masjid. Somewhere. Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi where his camel sat. He told the people, leave it, let it move, let it move, where it sat. He said, this is going to be the masjid. The house nearby was Abu Ayyub Ansari radiallahu and he stayed there. But the first thing is, we need that masjid. That masjid was a very big thing. And the adhan in the masjid was an even bigger thing. Because it was an announcement that for the last 13 years, when we worshipped Almighty Allah in privacy, that was not the complete Islam. We had to come to Medina Munawara because Almighty Allah has to be worshipped not in privacy. It was to give a second lesson to the world that the ibadat of a believer is different from the ibadat of the others. For the others, they have this system of worship such that it's a private matter. So when you're worshipping, you don't want others to see you. The Muslim was told because the deen of Allah had to be made apparent to all. One was through dawah through the tongue. A greater dawah was the postures of salah when someone was going to see it. So that masjid was going to be put up. That's why it wasn't going to be put in a forest. It was told you will choose the center of the town. Center of the town so a person will see the musallis walking to the masjid. He'll understand Islam is here. It was told the minaret must go higher. The adhan in the past was not on mics, but it was loud. So loud it was that it would go in the different directions. The muazzin would move to one area, so the noise will go in that. It will go towards his left, he would move to the other area. The maqsad was, purpose was, that everyone must know Islam has come to stay. It must be loud. It was never meant to be disturbing. It was meant to make an announcement that Islam is here. Da'wat tamma means a call has been made which reached all. Almighty Allah made the system such that there won't be a person who will say, but I never know what this Islam is. That Adhan was going to reach him somewhere. The masjid came, the Adhan came. Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi himself put his hands into the ground. He started building. You must understand at this moment his age is already 53. 
the age of 40 Nubuwa comes. 13 years in Nabi, Makkah Mukarramah is a Nabi. He makes the Hijrah. Around 53 or 54 this masjid is being put up. At that age Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is seen. Usaid bin Khudayr radiallahu anh is the military leader of the Ansar. For him he's shy. That Allah's Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam just came here. Like normally you'll have a Sheikh. Or you'll have a great Alim. Now that Alim comes you tell him please set you. Please let us do it. So when he saw Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam carrying that rock. And it was not an easy rock to be carrying. So he went and he said, O oh, Messenger of Allah, are we not more than sufficient for you? Nabi Yisrael also mentioned a very unique thing. He said, you are not more poorer than me in front of Allah. You are not more poorer than me in front of Allah. Go and find some other rock. What he meant is that I am not doing this here because I do not feel that you people are sufficient. And that you'll need help. And that's why I'm helping you. He said the reward that is being given in putting up this masjid. If you feel you poor. And that's why you need the reward. I'm just as poor also. I also need that reward. This was the foundation of a masjid. Which was going to be giving life to the whole world. Till the day of Qiyamah. Allah's Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi ensured. I will put my portion here. One was that the reward which was coming. One is he taught the world there's a perception of work. In a normal system of the world, the worker does the work and the mayor comes and he cuts the ribbon. So the worker who did it got no recognition. And the person who cut the ribbon, I mean, he's the man. Even if the boss does any work, he'll just take a spade and he say, right, take the picture. Now everyone will see. So he did work. But the main work he will never do. Why? Because he will say, I'm not created for this. But a believer will say that I am not created for this. But if in this there is reward, then I also need that reward. So the believer was not created for building the masjid. But if in that masjid there was going to be some huge reward, then Allah's Nabi Wasallam taught a lesson. That wherever you get the opportunity, don't miss it. Never ever think that this is not for me. Why? Because we are not created for this world. We created for another world. So putting that rock was not putting a rock in this world. It was putting your rock in paradise. Every brick that was going in that masjid was calling, called the brick of Jannah. This was a masjid that was not going to stop. It was just going to expand. It was going to give light to the world. Wherever me and you can get a chance in putting one brick in a masjid, just to throw a little sand in a masjid, just to go and tell the man, can I mix a little of this here? Or, whenever you see a masjid coming up, then we know that masjid will get its money. Because Almighty Allah will ensure whenever there's a project of a masjid, someone will be putting that money. No masjid you have ever seen today, not completed. No funds. But when a person sees the advert, normally he thinks, when he sees the Dawud put money in this masjid, he normally thinks that I'm sure they're looking for a big amount. And if I put my five rand there, it's not going to really help that amount. And then he drives past. But it was the opposite. That the masjid doesn't need his money. But it will be a fortune for him if he can get five rand in that foundation of that masjid. Because every masjid is going to get bigger and bigger. His five rand, perhaps even the accountant won't see it. But that one brick that he was putting is was to say, I'm also poor in front of Almighty Allah. If you are poor, I am also poor. When Sahaba radiallahu anh, saw this, they started reading another poem. They said, how will it be that we are sitting and the Nabi of Allah is moving? Meaning that group sat down, they were tired. Immediately they stood up and they started saying this here, that now we can't even sit. Because every time we sit, you'll see Allah's Nabi moving. And then they started building the masjid. When the masjid was completed, then came the time, at that time Masjid al-Aqsa was towards, I mean the Qibla was towards Masjid al-Aqsa. So that was north. So where the front of the masjid is north towards Jerusalem, there they put up a nice roof that was made of like the leaves of the Kajur tree. That leaves are huge. And one over the other you got a nice roof in the front. The rest of the masjid had no roof. And then about six months after, 
then Qibla was going to change. Complete opposite. So what was now the front of the masjid north, that was going to come the back of the masjid. So that part already had a roof. Nabi Sallallahu looked at it and he said, complete this roof, meaning make it now solid, like proper, full. And they went to the front of the masjid and obviously they would put up a new roof now for the front. What was the back of the masjid going to be used for? It was now going to be used to house whoever had no house. It was to teach that the masjid is not only a place of ibadah, but it's a refuge for the person who came out of kufr and he needs help in Islam. So it was called Sufa. It was not raised. Some people feel that the Sufa is a raised platform. There was nothing raised. Sufa means the roofed plat area. It had a roof. The people of that era, if you got a wall and you got a roof, that was a house for the man who got no house. Me and you will think like, what house is this? Like you're putting me in a garage. But for those people, they lived in tents. So who came to live in Sufa? One is the first group of the Muhajirin that came. Nabi Sallallahu put them by the Ansar. So an Ansar, he would take a Muhajir and he would say, you live with me. But the Ansar could not manage all. now. So as others would come, they would first go to Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And then he would look at the situation. And then he would tell him, for food, you go to that Sahabi. So he would start going there for food. But if he wouldn't say that I'm making you that Sahabi's brother, it will mean that you can't now be part of his household anymore. So that person would say, Sufa is for me. Sufa was now enough. There was nothing there, but it was everything. You just needed a place to sleep. There was no bedding. There was no dividing. You would just sleep. But you would have a lot of support because you're not sleeping alone at night. You got many others who are sleeping with you. It was to teach the masjid will become a support for people who come out of kufr into Islam when there are many of them in the masjid. If one non-Muslim accepts Islam and he comes in a masjid, you tell him, okay, stay in the masjid. After a few days, he will say, this jinnat. Yeah. But when a masjid becomes a place, in South Africa, perhaps up till now, we never saw it. In many places in the world, perhaps we never saw it. But as we move closer to the end, the era is coming where Islam is going to boom also. Where Kufar will make its boom, Islam is also going to make its. When Islam is going to be making its rise, from every house, one or two people are going to be accepting Islam. When that man accepts Islam, at least for the first 40 days, he needs a place that he can just... Get away from his family who's angry. A place where he can learn the basics which now he can't go to a maktab and learn it. There is no better place than a masjid. Why? Because in a masjid you don't have to learn and say madrasa is in the afternoon for one hour. In a masjid you're learning practically. You're learning in the morning. You're learning in the afternoon. You're learning at night. You can learn till 12, 1 o'clock also. Because everyone is around you. You see in the haram when someone is sitting... You can't get tired because another person is reading. And then somebody else is coming. Then the lights are on. Then even if you're tired, you lie down, your eyes open after a while, again you join. The demand was that every masjid now must be like that. That there must be a place in the masjid which is called the refuge for those who got no place of refuge. When the people of Sufa, the people, it was a house for the people who had no house. They would come there. There was no need for Sahaba radiallahu now to go look who needs food. Because it was known if the man is in Sufa, it knows, means he got no family. So no one is feeding him, now we will bring some food. They would bring that food there and the people of Sufa would eat. It would be obviously men coming, only arrangements were not made for women. But normally from the other villages to learn Islam, they would send normally one man would come. He would want to spend about 40 days in Medina Munawara. He would learn his deen. After 40 days, he said, I'm going back now. But in that 40 days, what he would learn in Sufa, because everyone around him in Sufa would teach him what he had learned a few days before. So he was the teacher. And then they had certain Qurra who would come and teach all of them. They would be engaged in Zikrullah. And each one would give support to the other. This was called Sufa. But the main lesson then came that Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, after he put 
the masjid up. At that time it was facing Jerusalem. Then came the time to build his house. He built his house next to the masjid. He gave a message to the world, if ever you get a chance, the closest and the best place you can be is close to Deen. As long as South Africa had what they call an apartheid system, people lived near the masjid because the masjid was built in the air. In the center of them, the masjid pitched up. So this man's house is coming, that man's house is coming, everyone's house is coming to the masjid. That was the honor. The masjid was your shade. Nabi Sallallahu put up his house next to the masjid to give a lesson to the world. The closer you are to your markaz, the more protected you and your family will be from fitna. In today's time, because this world is now going to open, and in our South Africa, we might also see a boom, meaning a shaitani like rise. We call it the rise of technology which we never imagined. When that will happen, you will see super cities coming up. also, Cities of the future. And many people will feel, now I need to sell and move there. Because it offers me more security. It got more business opportunities. It is much closer to where I need to be. It's at that time where a person of Iman will also consider, is there a masjid there? He will first look how far is the masjid. And if there is no masjid, then immediately he will make preparations that we will be putting up a small masjid here. But with no masjid, there is no deen. With no masjid, there is no deen. So he put up his house next to the masjid. Now when he put it up, historians write. Many of us now, because of a lot of work being done on history, we would have seen posters where they give like an image of what the house of Allah's Nabi Sallallahu would have looked like. So it was a very small house. It had that same roofing like what the masjid had. And then there was a small courtyard. The courtyard had no roof. The house was such that Hassan Basri rahimullah says that when I would put my hand up, I would touch the roof. So that's where the roof would be. Wouldn't be. So a man was normal height. You just put your hand up like this here. That's where the roof would be. It wouldn't be further than that. It was a small sample. So one historian writes that maybe a person might think that in that era, everyone had simple houses. So obviously it was going to be simple. He says that's not the case. He says in that era, people had simple houses, but not the kings. He says Medina Munawwara was known for tall buildings. It was known for its forts. People in Medina, Munawara, Jews and even Arabs, they had their forts. Allah's Nabi Sallallahu was the most deserving to put up his palace. And he had the builders. He had already made the sacrifice for 13 years. Normally you would say during your initial days you go through difficulty. Then when it's allowed, then now at least give in. At the time where the time came to put up a palace, Allah's Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi house being the most simplest of houses the world would ever see, was to give a message to his ummah. That remember, we're not created for luxury. Luxury is a thing of ease. Our bodies like it, but we're not created for it. It's not something we die for. Our honor is in simplicity. We are not created for luxury. So if you can get an easy life, what we call comfortable life, no problem. If there is something in, some luxury in something, but that thing offers no comfort, a believer will hear this hadith, إِيَّاكَ وَالتَّنَعُمْ فَإِنَّ عِبَادَ اللَّهَ لَيْسُوا بِالْمُتَنَعِمِينَ That stay far from luxuries, because the servants of Almighty Allah are not those drowning in luxuries. You might see in the world certain things and you will dream, if I can just get that, at that moment, think, will it make my life more comfortable than no problem? Because Almighty Allah created the world to make it easy for us. It was not meant to be difficult. Will it make my life more comfortable? No problem. Am I just bringing it to get one more luxury in my life? At that moment, then think, When my Nabi kept his house like that, it's only right I also keep my levels also like that. To a level, when the time came for that house to be broken years later, 
in the time of Walid bin Abdul Malik now all the houses were going to be made part of the masjid at that time most likely it was Sa'id bin Musayyib who said he said if only they could keep this one house so that the ummah that will come later on every one of them will look at it and will say that this was the house of my Nabi this was the house so today when you see that poster and they say like perhaps it would have been something like that it's to look at and to say, have we got not a little far in what is called luxury? That anything and everything I see, I must get. And unfortunately, it has hit many of our Muslim families. Because there is so much wealth pouring in, that person gets a phobia, that whatever comes on the phone, it looks good, it is good. I want it. What you got sometimes could even be better than that one. But because that one's advertised, the person says, okay, do it, now I want it. They'll never think about, do I need it? And will it give extra comfort or is it just a luxury? It's just a thing that looks different. And why, if someone says, is it not permissible, then think of that narration. Why was it said, Iyaka, watch out? Because of that same thing what we mentioned in the last two weeks, that person whose roots will go too deep in this world, mm-hmm. When the call will be made to uproot, that person will not be able to uproot. So to live such a life that I am just a traveler, under the tree, spent a few moments in this world and I am moving on. I got a journey. It must not happen when I rested under the tree. I put so many pegs in the ground that when it came time to wake up, I could not wake up. And I just got stuck and the journey was never completed. May Allah Taala allow us to take lessons from the seerah of Allah's Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Now and then think of that masjid. Think of my Nabi moving around carrying that. As he was carrying it, Ansar radiallahu read one poem. Allahumma la aisha illa aisha al-akhirah. That, oh Allah, really there's no life except the life of the year after. Meaning if this was really the world to live, the Nabi of Allah wouldn't be carrying rock. They said there's no real world and enjoyment except the enjoyment of the Akhirah. فَنْصُرِ الْأَنصَارَ وَالْمُهَاجِرَةِ Then they said, Oh Allah, help us and help the Muhajir, meaning to live up for this purpose of Islam. La Aisha, To picture that my Nabi, how he carried it. That we are created to put our bricks in paradise. And then when he put up his house on the side, then how simple he put it up. Although he could have had the biggest of palaces. Allah Taala bless us all with simplicity. Allah Tabarak Allah bless us all with tawfiq to do that which pleases Him.